Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. As so much has happened these past 24 hours, all these stories will be time marked down below for your convenience and hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode. Let's hop right into it though. Our first story today, we have now made a monumental step for all the match fixers out there. I know a lot of you guys watch right now are big fans of I Buy Power or X Epsilon members. We do have Swag, AZK, Steel, and Days alongside them, Uzi, Afixio, and of course we have Biggie from Team Epsilon. All seven of these guys were match fixers at a point in time over two years ago. And as of right now, we have DreamHack who announced this just today. They are now going back on their official ruling as many of you guys remember just over a month ago they said they would not be giving in and not allowing match fixtures to play in their tournaments and they have now gone back in their word and they are now alongside ESL will now be allowing match fixers who have had their bans for at least two years effective immediately to play in their tournaments and this is an unbelievably huge step because combined between the two ESL and DreamHack the DreamHack circuit and ESL Pro League that's almost two million dollars in prize pool money alone every single year and that offers so many temptations for organizations out there to offer these guys to play for them and shortly afterwards we saw that result impact because of course we have the X Epsilon guys already get together and they have formed a new French team on screen for all of you known as ironically enough Team Syndicates. So that's really cool to see. We have a Fixio, Uzi alongside them, Biggie and two other French members. They have now formed the only match fixing squad, majority match fixing squad ever to compete in CSGO. We'll see if they actually make any DreamHack or ESL tournaments in the future. But alongside that we also had Days put it the best way possible. This leaves only three heavy sluggers out there now left. And that is ECS, E-League and alongside them the ultimate big dog Valve. But this is very big because I think we actually had Uzi tweet out this a long time ago. We do believe that Faceit is already allowing somewhat, to some extent, some match fixers to play in their system, which does mean ECS should fall sometime short. We do expect ECS to follow suit with this. That opens a whole new league for teams out there as well. And if E-League do fall, that leaves every single organizer out there will allow these match fixers to play besides Valve. That leaves only majors out of the contest, and that leaves only majors out of the equation, and that does mean for sure these players will have serious offers from teams out there. And I could be completely wrong in this next segment, so please do me a favor and comment down below what you guys think about this next topic I'm going to talk about very shortly here. I want to talk about the way you guys hold in lighting different teams out there, different match fixers, different cheaters. It's been very cool to see and analyze from the outside looking in without trying to have a bias myself. I am a North American fan, so keep that in mind. But it's been very cool to see how people out there really do judge teams differently based on public image and their skill gap. What I mean by this is everyone right now in the, in the past few weeks and especially the past months or so, even pro players out there, I would say a majority of the community and majority of viewers out there want the I buy power players back. We hold them in this very high lighting because we know Swag, AZK, Steel, and Days. most of them do stream. They have very good public images and we know they're very good players. We kind of hold them in that kind of a very, very good lighting. You know, we want them back in the scene. Then you actually take a step lower and there's definitely a difference between the X I buy power members and the X Epsilon guys, both of who have actually match fixed, but we definitely see a difference in, in the community response to these teams. A lot of people out there do not like the X Epsilon guys, especially a Fixio because, oh, they did match fix. You know, they're all going to be playing together. Oh, I don't like that at all. It's very cool to see, not really necessarily cool, but it's interesting to see because they are a lot less well-known players, public image-wise, they're not streamers, they're not probably near as good as the North American guys. It's weird to see the community react, and they necessarily don't like, don't like them near as much because of their public image and of their skill gap. We have the IVAP Power guys, and of course the Epsilon guys down here. And even further, if you go back, the act, if you actually go past the step of match fixing and you decide to actually cheat in the game, the community becomes very unforgivable. We have the match fixing team of IVAP Power. We have the match fixing team of Epsilon, and then we have Kukli, the guy who actually decided to go out and cheat and hack the game itself and use an aim hack, and he is way, way down here off camera. You guys can't even see him, and people still don't even allow him to be back. He has been back for several months, ever since ESL said that VAC band players can to participate. He has been on Vex Gaming, the organization there. Of course, a couple of players of that team actually left it itself because they didn't even want to play with him. So it's very cool to see, and kind of interesting to see itself, the community response based off public image. If you guys have a large streaming audience, if you have good public image, and if if you're good at the game, people are likely to want you back. I don't know. I could be totally wrong about that. Please leave a comment down below what you guys think. But even more importantly, a lot of you guys have noticed in the past few months, we have not had the iconic duo of Anders and Semler for a long time. Of course, we've seen them time and time again at countless events, and they've taken a break from each other. It was actually Anders, though, who came out and interview. I'll link that interview down below for all of you, and actually told us exactly why that was. Now, the main overall reason I kind of drew from this, and again, I'll post some screenshots on screen for all of you, is the pair got very comfortable together. Of course, many of you know Anders kind of announced as well his taking a break from CSGO, Apparently, he does want to come back to announcing some CSGO events out there, or commentating some events, but he kind of, you know, took a break to actually have his own experiences, kind of go out in the world and experience different esports out there, different realms of esports, and that's why they've taken a break. Although it does seem sometime in the near future, maybe in the next few months, we could have the iconic duo come back together. Of course, we have had similar kind of commentate with other analysts out there as well in the past. We've had him go with Moses and other people out there as well, and that also has worked out in itself, but of course, never going to match the quite the talent that Anders and Semler did bring, the quite the chemistry they brought to the screen time. I'm sure you 
you guys remember some of those chemistry like moments. And that's gonna do it for today's episode of CSK News. I do apologize guys for the lack of stories out there. I wanna try and get these stories out there as soon as possible. I've been really struggling though because I'm a full time student and so I go to class and all these stories do break and I'm, I'm in the middle of class so I really can't do much about it. I hope you guys all enjoyed as well as what to look out for tomorrow guys, okay? In the next few days I should have this video coming up. Me investing $1,000 into a CSGO major. I'll need all your support on that video. It's hopefully gonna be a good one and very informative for all of you. But as always, thank you all for watching. I will see you guys all tomorrow with a live stream and all Saturday with a video and I hope you guys all enjoyed and uh, seriously, thank you all so much. I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna stop clapping.